Florida, but my next guest says he's getting a less than warm welcome from neighbors. Joining me now, Lawrence Lemer, historian and author. Lawrence wrote the book Mar-a-Lago, Inside the Gates of Power at Donald Trump's Presidential Palace. Larry, welcome back to the broadcast. Um, I know that you live actually in this neck of the woods and you have witnessed the big return. There you are. So what happened there and what's happened since Wednesday? Are supporters camping out outside his uh, property there? Are they lining the streets? What's it look like? No, what's fascinating, I've talked to a bunch of people the last couple of days. A lot of people have quit Mar-a-Lago. They don't want to, their names to be in the Washington Post and the New York Times and a list of people who have quit, but they've silently walked out. They don't want anywhere to deal with Donald Trump. And many of the members... They're not going there very often because it's a very dispirited place. I mean, they're not concerned about politics. They said the food is no good. There's no entertainment. It's a sad place for Trump to be hanging out. It's not what it was. Does that mean that Trump won't also get the money that he gets for those private club memberships? I mean, that's going to dwindle as well. You know, these people paid up to $200,000 right. to get in because he was president. I don't think they're going to pay there anymore. It's just another another measure of how his his uh, power has declined. And even in Palm Beach, where many people were for him simply because they wanted lower taxes and they wanted a booming stock market. But they're walking away from him. Even here, people don't like him. Yeah. I'm curious. Um, we have commercial planes that are flying over Mar-a-Lago again. No more road closures. How do you think Donald Trump will handle the end of all the special treatment he's gotten the last four years? Do you expect some time, some uh, type rather of withdrawal? I mean, do you have any knowledge about his mood? You know, one of his few close friends who's left is Chris Ruddy, who's head of Newsmax. Mm -hmm. and, and Chris mm -hmm. Ruddy opposed. Chris Ruddy said he should not be president because he's a sick man. He's emotionally disturbed. And then Ruddy saw he could take financial advantage by being close to him. But he is he is a disturbed person. And and. Any, any, anybody with all the exhilaration and pressures of being president would have a letdown, and he'll have it to the nth degree. He's nowhere, he's nowhere to go. He's isolated. This is his Alba.